hey guys what's happening so we are jumping back into the venom series for symbiosis necrosis part one which in itself is a continuation of the god carnage story where at this point in time carnage is still trying to find eddie and he plans to do so by going through dylan so if you're enjoying these videos be sure to drop a like subscribe if you're new to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour all right so for this one going into venom issue 31 for symbiosis necrosis part one this picks up just after what we saw in carnage issue four when god carnage went after flash thompson in hopes of discovering where he could find eddie brock as well as build his immunity to anti-venom but like we saw at the time when carnage looked through the memories of flash thompson to see where eddie was at carnage saw no sign of eddie since flash doesn't know where he is but instead it was here where carnage discovered that eddie's son Dylan Brock is the current host of the Venom symbiote. So he locked Flash away in the Dark Force dimension so that he could then go after Dylan himself in hopes of Dylan leading him to Eddie Brock. And so because of that, when we come back in Venom issue 31, we find Cletus Cassidy waiting outside for Jack Jr. who's a young man that followed in his father's footsteps by becoming a cop. And it's one of those things where for Jack, his mother finds it hard to even look at him after losing Jack's father in the line of duty, only to have her son look just like him and follow in his footsteps. So as Jack walks outside, he says bye to his mom and he runs into Cletus Cassidy, who right away tells Jack, you really do look like your father. So of course, Jack Jr.'s like, I'm sorry, like, is there something I can help you with? So Cletus is like, yes, you can die. Like father, like son. And it's just like, man, we on the first page and Cletus already doing nasty work. But from here, we head over to Dylan later the same day at a job interview where this guy is giving him a hard time by telling Dylan that he doesn't look 21, which I mean, it's because he isn't, but it's a warehouse job. And this guy doesn't think that Dylan's strong enough to handle all the work and the heavy lifting. But this is one of those things where Dylan, he needs this job because with Eddie gone, sure, Dylan has a place to stay, but outside of that, he can't afford groceries and he's gonna have to pick up that rent at some point. But this guy, he ends up giving Dylan a shot by just letting him work for a trial period to see how he does and if that works out he can stay but 27 minutes into working here the venom symbiote's just like i'm bored i'm bored i'm bored so dylan tells him it's only been 27 minutes and the symbiote's like oh what's that mean we made 27 dollars and dylan's like nah bruh more like four dollars but while they're here dylan gets a text with the red bubbles so you know that ain't iphone or android that's carnage and this text of course is asking where's eddie brock where's his dad with it also saying 15 seconds dylan so of course with dylan checking his phone one of his co-workers does an impression of their manager telling him to get off click clock or chirper which i guess is supposed to be twitter or x and tiktok but as soon as this guy opens the door to the next room he tells dylan not to go in there and without a warning this guy's killed at the door and when dylan looks to see what's on the other side there are bodies everywhere with a message written in blood saying where is eddie so right away for Dylan, he's feeling a combination of shock, fear, and disbelief. Because for one, he has no idea what's going on. The clock's ticking with six seconds left, and he has no idea what could have done this in the next room without him hearing a thing. And next, when he sees his backpack sitting in the middle of all this, which he knows he left at home, with two seconds left, him and the symbiote go to take a look inside, only to find that there's a bomb in there. So the two of them make for a quick exit just before it goes off. But right away, the Venom symbiote knows that this has to be Carnage. But even still in the middle of this craziness, because the symbiote's bonded to Dylan, it feels the shock and the fear and the disbelief that's racing through Dylan's mind and body like it's its own. So from here, they make their way back home to Eddie's brownstone. And when they arrive, the symbiote tells Dylan that someone else is here. So at first, Dylan's like, who is it, Carnage? And the symbiote tells him, no, it's someone else. And as it turns out, it's the landlady, Miss Mitchell who Carnage taped to the outside of the door on the rooftop. So when Dylan and the Venom symbiote got here, she'd point them out to what Carnage wanted them to see and delivered the message, where's Eddie? And when they make their way in, the first thing they see is the deceased body of Jack Jr. While in the background of recording is playing, saying innocent death is always unpleasant. Nothing must stand in our way. Nothing must block our righteous revenge. And as soon as they hear this, Dylan's like, that doesn't sound like Carnage. And it's right here where we find out the whole meaning behind Carnage killing Jack Jr. It's because that recording is Eddie's voice and he killed Jack's father years ago. Which right away, this lets the Venom symbiote know where Carnage is. 
because back in Amazing Spider-Man issue 300, Eddie returned to Our Lady of Saints Church in Lower Manhattan, where at the time him and the symbiote agreed that they would end Spider-Man here at the same place where it all began. But after breaking back into the church, a cop who was on patrol found Eddie, believing that he was just some thug who had broken in the steal from the collection box, and Eddie took this guy out in cold blood. So where right after, Eddie said, Innocent death is always unpleasant, but nothing must stand in our way. Nothing must block our righteous revenge. And by all that is sacred, nothing will. Which again, hearing this lets the Venom symbiote know that Carnage is waiting for them at Our Lady of Saints Church in Lower Manhattan. And as they head in, the symbiote tries to tell Dylan things like, okay, well, this is where I met your father and how him and Eddie weren't good back then. They did some bad things. On top of the fact that Eddie came here to delete himself, but a lot of this Dylan is already aware of. So the symbiote gives him a heads up by telling Dylan, so does Carnage. Which in a lot of ways, it really feels like the symbiote's trying to tell Dylan like, hey, don't let this guy get in your head. And as soon as they walk in, Cletus is like, let me talk to the boy. And Venom's like, nope. But Dylan insists that the symbiote lets him have this conversation. And right off the bat, Cletus is like, so no Eddie? Cause he was hoping that Eddie would have popped up or swooped in to save Dylan. And you can tell right off the bat, God Carnage is playing a mind game with Dylan. Cause keep in mind, in addition to Carnage absorbing all these different powers, he's also absorbed the mind of Cletus Cassidy. So effectively going forward, he's also one with Cletus Cassidy. And that's why for a moment here, after Dylan tells him that Eddie's not coming, Cletus goes on to tell a story about his father, Roscoe Cassidy, who killed his mom and blamed it on Cletus when he got locked up. And not only that, but he blamed him using the age old saying, look what you made me do. And he uses the example of Roscoe to say this was the moment when Cletus learned that parents are just people, which is an important lesson that we all must learn. And I mean, hopefully not in that way, but it's definitely a lesson that separates the boys from the men because only children see their parents as people who know everything and can do anything. And while Carnage is saying this, Dylan notices there's a bunch of decomposing bodies just all over the place. But Carnage then goes on to use the topic of disappointing parents to ask Dylan the question, where is Eddie? And Dylan tells him that he doesn't know. So Carnage is like, man, can't you just use the Venom symbiote and make a call? You know, hit him on the hive line. And it has Dylan like, okay, so that's what you want. You want me to bring Eddie to you. So Carnage responds saying, what I want, I am a god of simple desires, little brother. I want to kill. And I mean, right there, can we just acknowledge God Carnage calling Dylan his little brother? Because personally, I've been waiting for that for a while. <laughs> but next, Dylan makes it clear that he doesn't kill. And right here, Carnage tells him like, oh, but you know what it's like because your other's heart and mind are yours. And if you look at your symbiote's memories, you'll know how it feels because Venom knows. And that right there causes Venom to come out like, yes, I do know. But before they can get to Carnage, he has this guy hanging from the bell. So right away, Dylan and the symbiote, they go up there to save him. Even though it's disorienting for Dylan and excruciating for the symbiote, but nonetheless, the two of them push through it to save this guy. And while this is happening, Carnage is saying things to the Venom symbiote, like how can you call it symbiosis if you don't share your all? Which now, this isn't just Carnage playing the mind games with Dylan, but also he's using these other tactics like the church bell, and as well as the guilt trip, to distract and weaken the Venom symbiote as a means to carry out the rest of his plan. Cause next Carnage says, if you bleed, will he come? Will Eddie save you? And Venom tells him, I don't need saving. And Carnage tells him, I wasn't talking to you, Venom. I was talking to the boy. Who's going to save him from you? Why do you lie to him, Venom? Are you scared of rejection? Scared he's going to leave you all alone if he sees your true self? Or do you think you're going to corrupt him like you've corrupted the rest of his family? Would Eddie be a killer without you? Or what about Anne? Which right there, that, that's a low blow. Because you can tell Carnage is bringing up all of these sins of the past as a way to separate Dylan and the Venom symbiote. So now with Carnage mentioning Anne Wayne, Dylan's mother, this is a low blow because for her, after becoming She-Venom in Venom Center Takes All, after some time she lost it. And eventually when she saw Spider-Man rocking another black suit, she thought this was the Venom symbiote coming after her again. So out of fear, she jumped out of the window. And keep in mind, as traumatizing as this was for Eddie at the time, the Venom symbiote shares this shock, this pain, the heartache from Eddie Brock, just like it's its own. And that includes what would later become the guilt as well. And now with Venom bonding with Dylan, it's pretty obvious why the Venom symbiote is not completely opening up to Dylan. 
especially with the details of a moment like that. And now this sets everything up for Carnage to go into Venom's memories and force both Venom and Dylan to see and feel the memories of Anne Wayne from the bloodlust that came from the Venom symbiote to her guilt that followed. And after that, going to Eddie, when he slipped into depression and tried to block the memories and the voice of the symbiote out. Mind you, Dylan sees and feels all of this and it takes him to the point where there aren't even words for the pain he feels. And it's right here where Carnage knows that Dylan's ready. So he pulls Dylan out of the Venom symbiote and Dylan doesn't even try to resist. And that alone hurts the Venom symbiote more than any blade ever could. So right here, Carnage just tells Dylan, you really don't know where he is, do you? Eddie just left you here alone. No money, no family. He left you with nothing. I usually kill for the joy of it, but this is mercy. And right there, Carnage kills Dylan and the Venom symbiote loses it. But this time it's a lot different than what we saw when Dylan went up against Bedlam. Because back then, Dylan was snatched up into Venom's hive just in time. That was different. Because this time around, Dylan, he actually dies. And much like his father before him. Because, you know, like father, like son. That's the theme that's going on here. Dylan finds himself in the unbeyond with the eventuality. Where I imagine from here, much like Eddie, Dylan's going to learn more about how all of this works. And that's just going to lead to him having a better understanding of who he really is. And what he's truly capable of. And so now real quick, I'm going to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right. Later.